Welcome to Thank you for tuning in to Warbury Kids Radio. My name is Oscar. I'm Megan. I'm Lily. I'm Livy. Da 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 Daisy. I'm Max. I'm Chelsea. Mikel. I'm Faith. I'm Caitlin. It's da 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 James. This broadcast is brought to you by Ocean Youth Radio Here and Now Project, collecting stories across Tall Bay. Coming up on Warbury Kids Radio, we have brilliant radio radio dramas linked to talkie and our school values we have interviews with members of our school community and for friendship we have um friendships forming for courage we have people in the jungle we have people stuck on beaches of dunkirk and we have our very own just so this morning we made fun dramas focusing on our um christian values hope friendship courage and creativity Creativity links to Roger Kipling, who lived in Torquay and wrote the Just So stories. Hope relates to Lady Cable, who... Lady Cable is a boat that saved soldiers from Duncan. Courage was... um, Percy Fossick, who was an explorer who lived in Torquay. Friendship, well, that's stories that we made in our drama scenes. Now we have um, our fun dramas, which we made earlier this morning. We we hope you enjoy. Um, we're going to begin. Let's begin. Dunkirk. Based on a true story of my grandfather, who was one, who was a soldier that got rescued by the small boats on the beach of Dunkirk long ago. It, an entertaining version of a tragic but hopeful story. We're not gonna make it. We're gonna die in this Dunkirk beach. We can't rot here. Well, this Dunkirk beach is getting us nowhere. Guys, look. Even if the boat doesn't come, and even if we get attacked by the Germans, we have to have hope in ourselves. But the Germans are getting closer. Look, a boat! (gasps) Finally, hope at last. Everybody on the boat, run, run, run! Wait, take me with you, please. I'll give you all of my francs. I can't, I can't. I'm sorry, I won't. I'm risking, I'm risking everyone's lives here. If you leave me here, you're risking my life. I'm sorry, no. You'll just go back to your family, little boy. I don't have a family. Everybody on the boat! Say goodbye! Please take me with you! Please take me with you! (laughs) Okay, that's the end. Hi, my name is Caitlin. And I'm Megan. Rudyard Kipling lived in Torquay. He wrote the Jungle Book and the Just So stories. Here is our version of how the octopus got its tentacles. There once lived a sea slug who gave birth to eight crazy kids. She was very upset because her kids never listened and were crazy. Um. This is how it happened. This is how it happened. One day, the sea slug got back from work to hear her kids make a racket. (laughs) (laughs) Bubbles, stop climbing on the coral. You know it's dangerous and poisonous. Whatever. Don't break that. That's poisonous. I don't care. Stop ruining the seaweed. Uh, can buy some more. That's it. I've had enough. I'm going to Neptune. Who dares come forth to Neptune? Neptune, I am in need of your help. My kids, they're going crazy. Mm, I get this a lot. <sighs> Struggling mother. 
Um, I think I have a way I can help you. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> what are these? Tentacles. So you can grab into your children. There's one for each. <gasps> I got eight tentacles. Yeah. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> when she got back home. I still need your help. These are too slimy. My kids keep escaping. Mm. Well, I might have another way. Whatever. They keep breaking free. They remind me of a song. You know, like. Oh, uh, here you go. Bing boom bing. What are these? Suckers. <laughs> Hopefully, these will work. <laughs> when she got back home again. <coughs> And from that day on, the octopus forever had tentacles. The end. Uh, whenever you're ready. Now we are going to be doing our story of friendship when we went to the beach. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And today we're going to be telling you about the time we went to tour KC Fun. Um, because it was a really hot day, um, we decided to go into the water on our bodyboard and it was an absolute fail because we both fell in the water and got salt water in our eyes. And I absolutely hate getting salt water in my eyes. And then we decided, because we were like already really soaking wet, to just um, splash each other even more. Mm, it was really fun. So from like got salt water in my eyes again. And then we decided um, because we needed to get the salt water out of our eyes to go onto the sand, which was really really hot, and make a sandcastle, which was amazing because it was really cool. It was really pretty. We used seashells as like the windows and a toothpick with a piece of seaweed on it <laughs> as the flag and we used these like really really um gorgeous uh seashells as like the windows and, and doors. we had a moat and we ended up getting a little jellyfish in it because it um the water like left it in there and it was really fun um and then i went to ask my stepmom if we can have a couple of pounds to get an ice cream and I and we both had a, the traditional Mr. Whippy with a really like crispy flake and chocolate sauce. It was so nice. I ditched the chocolate sauce and just had a traditional Mr. Whippy. Yeah. <laughs> so apart and it was like a really, really nice day apart from getting salt water in our eyes, Mr. Whippy like all over our faces and then we just decided it, it was time. time to go home. And at the end of it I got extremely sunburnt. Approximately 200 years ago, a man named Percy Fawcett, born in Torquay, England, was convinced that there was an ancient civilization based in the Amazon rainforest. Destined, he set off on his venture, but unfortunately never came back. Enjoy. Oh, my chest is getting heavy. I think my one's going blunt. Oh, the bugs are getting to me. The heat's making my so head sweat. I know. I'm just going to get some water. Ah! Percy! Percy, talk to me! Oh, what's that? Get down! Shh. Hi, my name's James, and this is a story when me and my friend Tom went go-karting in Brixham. We had a really great time, but I won as always. 
I'm gonna win. No, I'm gonna win. No, I went away, so. Well, you better get ready because it's gonna start soon. Here it comes. Mm. Beep, mm. beep, mm. beep. Mm. wins how the dolphin lost his voice I think the dolphin um, had a beautiful voice and he loved to jump out of, jump out of the water and sing with pride ah. yeah and one day his parents advised him, don't go out the water now, you're, you're making a racket, waking everyone up. It may be a nice racket, but it still wakes them up. Really? What happened next? The dolphin, the, the seagulls got very jealous of the dolphin's voice and came up with a cunning plan. I'm hatching an evil plan, and by the time we have finished, boys, we shall be the best singers in the world. Example. <laughs> and oh, so the seagulls got a stone and threw it at the dolphin's voice box. So he went like this. <coughs> oh no, my voice! Why did they do that? Um, because they were very jealous of the dolphin and now they could be the best singers in the ocean. And when the dolphin cried back to his parents, they had no sympathy for him because for many years they had been telling him to stop it, but he didn't listen. You should have learnt your lesson earlier, they said. And that's why the dolphins sound like this now. The author Rudyard Kipling, who wrote Jungle Book and the Just So Stories, lived in Torquay. This is our very own Just So Story about how the seahorse got its distinctive features. Once there was a young seahorse and his mother. Can I go out with my friends today? No, yes, because if you're going to... You can't go in any shells because you get stuck in them and get a curly tail. Okay, Mum, don't worry about me. And he raced off to meet his friend. <laughs> Once at the coral, his friend said, I dare you to go into that shell. No, because my mum said I'm not allowed. Jellyfish, jellyfish, chicken. Fine, I'll go in. But once inside, he realised he couldn't get back out. Was, once the seahorse was out, he realised that he had a curly tail. Oh no, what will I do now? My mum's going to see this. Maybe I can flatten it out. But it didn't work. And he raced home. <laughs> what is that? Um, it's my tail? I didn't mean to. It's, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. But as soon as he said that, his nose grew longer. I, I didn't mean to climb in the shower. It, it wasn't my fault. I fell. And when he said that, his nose grew longer again. Sorry, Mum. I was just messing around. And that's the story of how the seahorse got his long nose and curly tail. Percy Forsat was a Victorian explorer who was born and grew up in Torquay. He was convinced there was a lost city in the Amazon jungle and set off on an expedition to find it. Oh. Percy, we've been doing this for ages and I don't think there is a lost city. I'm starting to doubt it. We can't need to. We can't stop now. This is an adventure. <gasps> oh no. It's, it's starting, starting to rain. rain. Oh, we need I'm... to find shelter somewhere quickly. Let's start walking. Do you see anywhere yet, Percy? Oh, look! A shelter! We could stay there for the night. 
Yeah, why don't we sit down? Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh, I think I found it. <gasps> the Just So Stories were written by Rudyard Kipling, who lived in Torquay. This is our Just So Story of how the jellyfish lost his skeleton. Sea slug, look at my spine. Leave me alone. Hey, hey, starfish, look at my prickly and most powerful spine in the whole ocean. Leave me alone. Hey, Mr. Stingray, look at my spine. My spine's way more powerful than your spine. That's it. Ah, my spine. Ha ha. You're not a spine fish anymore. You're a jellyfish. You've oh got no! no spine. I've turned to jelly! Hi, my name is Caitlin, and my favourite part of the day has been when we all interview people about their interesting stories. Hi, I'm Max, and my favourite part of the day has been making the Dunkirk um, boat, boat rescue. We have really enjoyed creating this broadcast and I hope you have enjoyed tuning in and listening to the Warbury Kids Radio. See ya! Bye! Woo!